Hi everyone. I want to welcome you to October's session of Money Moments, where we're going to be talking about having a debt-free holiday. So let me ask you, do you remember what you received for your holidays last year? Whether you think it's the most wonderful time of the year or whether you can't wait till January, it's undeniable that the holiday season has turned into a nonstop celebration of consumer spending. And every year it seems to be getting started earlier and earlier. While it's great to celebrate the holidays and share generosity with your loved ones, too many families get overextended financially due to too much shopping. Holiday shopping will certainly look different this year. Due to COVID-19 and the situation going on, many shoppers will hit the stores alone, not taking family members along. And it's predicted that 47% more people will be shopping online and much earlier. Stores will try to meet you there because of this. So for example, Walmart is offering an app where you can unwrap toys virtually. Now it's not gonna be the same, but it may be an alternative. Amazon Prime is slotted to do their um, uh, Amazon Prime Day the middle of October. And Black Friday rush may be a thing of the past as a lot of the stores are saying they're going to be closed on Black Friday. People are going to be adjusting their expectations of what they give and what they receive this year. It appears that the hot items this year are probably going to be for your home, such as kitchen appliances, home electronics, uh, leisure and sports equipment, and home exercise items, as well as items to keep the kids busy. If you have an item in mind, do your research, and as soon as you can find a deal, you may want to buy it because inventory is probably going to be tight this year. So start your shopping early. So let's look at some ways to keep the holiday season merry for your finances. Number one is to set a budget. According to a survey from Harris Interactive, 69% of U.S. adults who are planning to do holiday shopping are not planning to set a budget. This is a mistake. Without setting a budget in advance, it's easy to spend more than you ever imagined, and you'll be paying off those bills for months to come. Before you start shopping, sit down and make a list of all the holiday gift recipients that you want to put on your list. Who do you want to buy for, and how much are you willing to spend? And remember to spend within your means. Decide what you're going to spend beforehand, rather than being surprised how much you spend afterwards. Otherwise, you'll wake up in January with a nasty financial hangover. When making your budget, be sure to include all of those other holiday expenses, such as decorations, holiday cards, postage, gift wraps, all those kind of things. Number two, make a list and stick to it. With a clear shopping list showing exactly what you want to buy, you'll be less likely to overspend or make expensive impulse purchases. Ask your kids to make a wish list of the gifts that they would most like to see under their tree. And find out what your family members really want. I mean, it might be more affordable for, your, um, for them to tell you what you want than the original idea you have. Maybe you thought you might buy a high-priced electronic, and maybe they'd be just as happy with a new pair of jeans or sneakers. Making a list also helps you avoid forgetting anything important. So just like Santa, you want to check your list twice. Number three, do some research, especially when you're making big purchases. Read reviews, compare prices, and talk to knowledgeable people. Don't get roped into extended warranties and unnecessary accessories. And if you're shopping online, look for free shipping or ship to the store. Number four, cut back on the gift buying pressure. Many people spend way too much on holiday gifts because they feel pressured to do so. There's an unspoken assumption in many families that giving a gift is the way to show your love and they don't want to disappoint anybody. So set expectations ahead of time. If you're trying to save money that during the holidays, um, enlist your family members to, and friends to help you. Explain to your kids that you're going to try and have a simpler, less stressful holiday this year and they're going to stay within a budget for gift, for gift giving. You might also consider doing something nice for somebody else as a family instead. Or maybe 
buying gifts um, or putting money toward, instead of buying gifts this year, you might want to put money towards a vacation experience if we can ever fly and go somewhere again. So instead of spending hundreds of dollars on gifts for dozens of extended family members, you might want to arrange for a simple lower cost gift exchange where everybody in your family is assigned to give a gift to one other family member. Draw names. Host a simple gift exchange and maybe you set a limit low, like $25, so you don't put pressure on yourself or your family to buy those extravagant, expensive gifts. You might find one of the best ways to save on money for holiday shopping is to rethink your holiday shopping priorities. Many families find that holidays are more enjoyable without all the stress of shopping. So you might want to consider some of those options to save money while having a more laid back approach to the holiday. This year may look different with COVID, but consider simplifying your entertainment. Holiday parties don't have to be stressful and overwhelming. Instead of inviting 30 people for a four course gourmet dinner, trim down the guest list and host a casual brunch or afternoon appetizers and some wine or host a potluck. Instead of cooking a big holiday meal, potlucks are fun. It's the company that counts. Your loved ones won't hold it against you if you try to save money on food and the fixings. So just spending time with your family and friends is the most important gift of all. Make it personal. Some of the best gifts are the ones that come from the heart. So instead of spending hundreds of dollars on store-bought goods, use your creative skills to make or bake a gift for a loved one. Do you know how to knit or sew or crochet or do some kind of craft work? Or maybe you give a IOU, like for babysitting. Do you have a special recipe for Christmas cookies or other treats? Something that truly comes from you might be more appreciated and longer lasting than just buying another one of those high priced gifts from the mall. Find some frugal fun. Do something free or cheap instead to celebrate the holidays. Instead of spending a lot of money at the mall, take your kids to skating at a park. Or maybe have a family movie night where you got a favorite movie and eat popcorn and um, have hot chocolate in a family room together sharing memories. Some of the best holiday fun comes from sharing quality time and memorable moments with your loved ones. And that doesn't have to involve spending money. Beware of online shopping. People often spend more than they mean to when they shop online because the money doesn't seem as real as it does when you're paying cash. Online shopping with credit cards and quick clicks can drain your bank account fast and you may end up having trouble. Have a plan for every holiday purchase. Impulse shopping can be especially expensive this time of year. Try to pay for the holidays without using a credit card. You can do this by using a Christmas Club account. Um, a lot of people save change in their jug um, or a container. You might want to buy gifts little by little throughout the year. Uh, somebody told me once, they said they did not spend one red set for Christmas last year. They put it on their credit cards. Sadly, this is not an unusual perspective for a lot of folks. But remember, credit cards represent debt, not money. Each time you use one, it's like taking out a loan from the bank. So so to give perspective, if you use credit cards, try to pay the balance off by the end of the month. Think about this. A $1,000 holiday charged on credit cards and paid off with the monthly minimum payments will take you approximately eight years and $900 in interest to pay off. So that means little Katie's kindergarten gifts will be paid off as she graduates from eighth grade. Yikes. But one exception would be for any item that might present a potential problem with a purchase. So under the Fair Credit Billing Act, you have the ability in certain circumstances to withhold payment on defective merchandise until the problem has been corrected. Be generous to those in need. So as part of your holiday shopping plans, consider setting aside some time and money to give to those in need. Whether it's sending a care package to a deployed military person, serving dinner at a homeless shelter, signing up as a bell ringer for Salvation Army, or giving a certain percentage of your holiday shopping budget to a charity, you and your family have many opportunities to give this year as well as receive. You might give to somebody who has no ability to repay or to give to somebody anonymously. 
You might even find that these acts of generosity inspire you to spend less and do without some of the expensive gifts that were on your wish list. May your holidays be merry and bright, safe and healthy, and spending cherished times with family and friends. Happy holidays.